for coming, Coops. Nice right, to mate. see you. No problem. How you been? I'm very well, thanks, you. Yeah, all good, good, all good. I'm good, yeah. How's, how's Bristol? Oh, do you know what? It's good, you know. I, um, it's just riddled with traffic everywhere. Yeah. Do you know, no matter where we went today, I was trying to, I left two hours to get here, and it's just riddled with traffic everywhere. They put like a, I mean, I don't know how we coped before, they've put a ring road around the outside of Bristol. It's chock a block, every, you know, every day, so fuck knows how we coped before. But okay. yeah, all good. How you been? Yeah, all good. Busy, busy down there. Yeah. Just doing this and okay. the shop and stuff. So yeah, good. taking over nicely. Good. So let's get into it then, Mike. Oh, where, man. where did it all start? Where were you born? Where, where did you grow okay, up? Okay, so I was born obviously in Bristol. I was born in Saidman Hospital. Um, I had a great upbringing. I got an older brother, Ricky. You know, best friends. My mum and dad was, you know, absolutely unbelievable parents. Um, my dad's side were travellers. Um, so, although I don't know many of the travellers, my, my, fa- my father's side, you know, obviously my grandma, my, all my uncles were travellers. We didn't really mix. As a young kid, you know, I was, my mum, I was obviously born as my dad was, but my nanny, my granddad lived in a caravan, trailer, shall we say. So, um, so yeah, so we had a, we had a, we had a great upbringing. My, because gra- my grandfather's side, they were box, boxing the boost, they was boxing. So that's where, I, that's where I sort of got it from. You know, my, my brother was quite a good rugby player. And, um, yeah, I sort of, I sort of badgered my dad. Because, well, I mean, it wasn't really that, you know, you know, I didn't see that popular as a young kid, the boxing at the time. You know, but uh, I badgered my dad. And anyway, we, we went to a local, um, you know, place called the Empire. And it was rammed, it was rammed with kids. And it was, in a, it was in a rough area, a rough state called St. Paul's. So I was like one of the only white kids there. So and I just got this 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 mad bug to fight. And I just thought, I'm just going to fight. I'm just going to be a boxer. I'm just going to fight. And as a kid, I just think, oh, I'm just going to be a world champion, you know? And yeah. that was really how it was, you know? Uh, and that's how it started. I joined my brother. My brother joined. My brother didn't fight. Um, and... That was it. That, that that was that was my start. I started at ten, but you couldn't fight. She was eleven, so we trained for a year, and I think then I think we lived in a. Cause my, my my dad had a fruit and veg businesses, so I think we we lived about a little bit. You know, we sort of tr- moved about a little bit because I had to travel a bit of us, and then uh, so we used to, I used to cycle as a young kid from Patchway to St Paul's, which was probably. I don't know, maybe seven or eight miles there. So, you know, that's quite a lot as a, as a young kid. Yeah, yeah. So I used to do that. So I did it every day and I got, I got two buses. And then uh, that was my sort of introduction into being a fighter. Into the boxing. So, yeah. was your, so was it your dad or your granddad before you that were boxers? Well, my dad did a bit. My dad did a bit. But my, my, my granddad was a criminal as well. So my dad, so that's what I sort of got, that's what I got my, you know, my sort of bit, bit, bit from. So my, my, my granddad was a fighter. My, my, my dad was quite a good fighter, so I believe. I think he was sort of, you know, kind of schoolboy champion. But all my granddad's family, they all box. Everyone around, you should, you know, you sit there telling me stories about the boxing booze and the, the, the fist fights, you know, the bare knuckle fights. You know, he used to talk about all the travel, all the different families. And they used to meet and, you know, they used to go to the shows and fight bare knuckle on the, you know, I, used to, I was, you know, fuck, wow, you know, as a young kid, you think, I can't, I can't be real. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's that's how it started. You know, so um, you know, I, you know, I, I boxed for Empire all the way through. Um, I, was, I trained at ten, and we trained, and I had my first fight at eleven, and then that was it. So then, I, then, I, then, I, then I, I was boxing as a schoolboy. So I started boxing at ten, but first fight at eleven, and then just worked the way through. Well, yeah. no, it didn't. It sort of. I'll tell you what happened. I sort of. I I, I had. I was, I was an average fighter. I was an average uh, amateur. You know, there, there were some good fighters in, in the gym, and I sort of suffered quite a lot with my nerves, and uh, so I had quite a lot of schoolboy fights. And then I think I think I think such a fourteen, you know, you um, it's, it's schoolboy, and then fifteen, you're a junior. So then I had, I, had, I think I had like 40, 50 schoolboy fights, and then I sort of I didn't fall out of love with it, but then I started meeting girls and we started drinking after school. You want to be with your mates, and I sort of. Sort of distancing myself from it, from from it, yeah. and then I think I had one more fight. Um, it was fourteen, which I lost as an amateur, 
Uh, and then, then I didn't box. Then I didn't box. And then I sort of, sort of, I sort, I sort of, in my mind, I thought, I'm going to be a criminal. Because my granddad used to, what happened was I used to, I used to always be weekends with my granddad. And we used, to, we used to, before it was all day drinking then. So we used to go around the pub and it was, I was just sitting in the pub with my granddad and all his mates in there. They all had a lot of sort of rings on their little fingers. It was all suited and booted. And it was all sort of, and it was, it was just get on the piano, sing off. Oh, yeah, this is a bit of me. You know, just sit me down, give me a score or whatever it was. Just like, you know, I think flipping out, you know, it was like a bundle of money. And they'd always pull their hands out of their pockets with a big wad of money. I thought, oh yeah, this is a bit of me. Yeah. And uh, so I've sort of, so <laughs> I watched every gangster film on the planet. Every gangster film on the planet. I had, I had, it was, it was VHF set. And I had them all, I had, I had, I had every one. So sort of, that sort of took over. So, you know, I was still at school then. And then, so I didn't box. I didn't box. I didn't, um, I didn't box then. I didn't, I didn't box then until I was 19. So what got back, even, got you back into it at 19? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I was, I was, I was, you know, I, I always loved boxing. So I'd always watch it on the telly and I wanted to step, like it, I used to step late with my dad and watch it like three, four in the morning, like all the, all the greats, Tyson, Lennox Lewis, yeah, yeah. you know, like all the greats to step, step late. So then I, st- I, I left school at 16 and I was getting, you know, I was getting in trouble at school, you know, I was sort of fighting and, you know, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't a really naughty kid, but I was quite naughty, you know, do you know what I mean? I didn't get kept spot from the schools. I went to one school, um, and, but obviously I was an amateur boxer. So I was a little bit, I was a little bit handy at school gym because, because obviously I was an amateur boxer. Nobody wanted to yeah. take the chances, just, you know, I was only small and usually I'd punch the reds in because I was, you know, I'd have that boxing yeah. background. So then at 16, I started a job with my brother, Ricky, he was a chippy. He's two years older than me. And then I just thought, we get up at six in the morning, we go to work, we work on a building site all day. And I thought, this ain't for me. And I keep remembering them people with the little pinky ring, what's the money? I thought, nah, this ain't, I can't do this. So what I done, we was working away in London. We was, we was obviously working away on digs. We was there Monday. We come back Friday. I thought, yeah, but there's no more. I kept thinking of the, kept thinking of the pinky ring. I thought, I'm going. So we we're waiting for all to sleep, go to sleep. Anyway, I was tucked in. I, I nicked the keys off the boss. Anyway, I jumped in the car, sorry, and I went home. I come home. I nicked the car. My brother said, you have nicked the van? I said, yeah, I'm not coming back. So uh, Nick the boss's van. I nicked the boss's van, yeah. Got me nicked. Got community service. And then um, I go back and I got community service in London. And then that was that was the sort of start of it. I thought that was the sort of the, the sort of real start of me searching to being a criminal i didn't know i didn't know what i was doing i didn't know i didn't know yeah. what i was going to start to do but then like i started like buying nick stuff you know we buy nick tellers nick videos or nick you know and that's how it sort of started and i thought god i'm gonna go live in here yeah you so know that, so that was your intro into crime. yeah it was my intro yeah, yeah you know you know selling drugs in the robberies sort of come later you know yeah. I, I um like a natural progression yeah it's just a progression yeah. you know and then I went to, um, deten- now what happened was I went to detention, so I think I was 16. I got probation and then, uh, I, just, I, I, I don't really know what it was. It, but I, and we, it was by Northfield Prison. And we, there was, there's, there's the allotments there, so I was working in allotments. And then I didn't, like the, I didn't like the woman who was taking us. She was a bit rude and that, and I thought, you know what? So anyway, so I locked her and threw in the cupboard. Sorry, I threw in the cupboard, locked the cupboard and went home. So by the time, I got home, the police was there. I got, so the detention went to Usk yeah. before it was a nonsense jail. I went yeah. to, I went, I put that in there. So I went to Usk, got, I think I got four months. And then, um, you know, it's like a, it's like military there, isn't it? You know, to, you know, you have to march every day. And I thought, fuck, I didn't expect prison to be like this. This is like, you know I mean? I just didn't expect a parade every morning, you know, walking around on rags on your feet, keeping the cell warm. You know, we have to run everywhere, call everyone sir, shirts tucked in. I thought, God, I didn't expect it to be like this. Anyway, so I got out, I thought, no, never again. A week later, I've chinned somebody else, I'm back in there. So then I get another six months. And then, um, I'm, so I'm out. So then after the six months, we got out. My dad said, look, you got, you know, this ain't no good. You've got, you've got to get a trade. You've got, she's right, you know, you've got to get a trade. Yeah. You need a job. You can't, he never kicked me out. He'd never kicked me out. He said, look, you can't just... Do nothing. You got to get. You got to get a job. So of course, still thinking of the pinky ring and everything. I think, right, fuck, this is a bit gangsterish. What can I do? 
I know, Otter and Pro. So now I'm 19, you know, so now I'm 19. I haven't boxed since I was 14. So I'm thinking, Otter's just too proud. Can't be that hard. So anyway, I haven't boxed since I was 14. So I go, I go to the gym. I'm still smoking. I was having a little puff at the time. Goes down to the gym and um, starts training. And I knew the, 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 the text were with the training. Because I was going down there since I was 12, like yeah. the professional gym. Great guy he was. Who was the trainer there? Text Woodward. He was a great guy. He was real, real nice, real nice guy. And I've been training there since I was 12, 12 off and on. So he knew me. Yeah. So I said, Tex, I said, uh, I want to turn pro. He said, what on about? I said, I want to turn pro. He said, can, you, can, you, can we do it? He said, well, I was the last time we trained. I went, I don't know, probably three years ago. So I just come out with gel again. I said, uh, gel again. I said, and, um, I'm, not, I'm not in bad nick. So obviously I boxed since I was there and I had the basics of it. So in my mad, mad head, I just thought, right, gangster boxing pro, it all fits. It fits the image. This, yeah. this is the image. That's it. I'm, I'm flying on the fly. So I started training, I started training. I, I was enjoying it. And then I turned pro. But what happened then? My old trainer, because there was a guy called, who, who I ended up going with in the end, Chris Sanger, you know, great guy, great, yeah, yeah. great manager. And Alan Thompson was the trainer and he, put in our local paper with the Evening Post that I wasn't good enough to turn pro, you know, and I'm going to get hurt and I shouldn't turn pro. Oh, just done me. You know, like, I mean, I don't know many millions, thousands of people that paper goes out to. Oh, I was fucking devastated. You start off a pro career like that. Yeah, and I just thought, I was dead and everyone, everyone's ringing me. We've seen that in the paper. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I just wanted to fucking just run away. And my, my old man said, listen, you, you know, you, you can either not fight and it'll all go away in a couple of months, or just prove them wrong. So that was my that was my that was my motivation then. I thought, you know what, fuck, fuck this. Mm. I've got this, and I said, and then all of a sudden, it's just somewhat clicked, and I just I just trained like a like a like a like you know like a world champion was every day, and uh, yeah, that was it. So I had my first professional fight at nineteen at Formby Leisure Centre. We sold it out. Yeah. Oh, it was like winning a world title. Honestly, I mean, I don't know why I sort of, it's better than any drug I've ever had in my life. So I don't know why I bloody stopped and started taking drugs. You know, it was absolutely, they're all cheering your name. And you just think, well, I was downstairs. Down, I was downstairs in the change room and I knew I was on last because I sold the most tickets. So there's a small show, five, five fights. And I was thinking, fucking, this ain't going to happen. This is like, something's going to happen. I'm not going to fight. So I couldn't believe it was, you know, I could hear them all screaming my name. I thought, oh my God, I was, I was so nervous. And I thought, oh, do you know, it's not going to happen. I just, I convinced myself, I won't go. I convinced myself that I was going to fall over and break my leg or he wasn't really going to fight me or the ring was going to collapse or something, something was going to happen. So then, right, he said, right, the most, most frightening thing ever, he come in, the, the, they call it the whip, he comes with the gloves, he went, right, you're on next. Oh my God. I just all oh, just drained out of me. I thought, oh my god, I'm on that. So yeah, we so we gloved up. We so we walked up. It was getting louder and louder. Going to the to, to the to the ring, and all of a sudden the doors open and just you know people just screaming. And I just thought, fucking, I was there. Even when I got in the ring, I still didn't think it was going to happen until we started changing punches. Yeah. It was a it was a Welsh guy's dog fight. That's Russell Washer. Yeah, I'll beat him. Yeah, beat him. Yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah, I'll return with him. Yeah, so. So how soon after that did you fight next? Well, I fought. Funny enough, I fought because I, I was with a guy called Tex. who was a who was a great guy. He was, who was, but he wasn't. He never really had a promoter behind him. So we was always the opponent. So they would ring up, and they would say like, oh, "Would I be an opponent?" So I was. If it's the home show, say it's the home show. Say it's my show, it's the home show. Then say you're my fighter. I would get an opponent for you. So, you, so it's like a 60-40 in your favour. Yeah. So I was always, but when I was with Tex, I was always the opponent. I was always boxing away, boxing away from home. So I fought, I think, six times in about five months. I won them all. I won every fight. But then all of a sudden, I was win, win, win. The people who were doubting, yeah. they were thinking, bloody hell. I'm 6-0, and 7-0 oh, oh, away from home. Which is quite difficult being an away fighter. So obviously these other promoters ain't gonna start calling. Well, the ones off. that were slagging me off what to sign me. Yeah. So the ones that put the put the I wasn't good enough, what to sign me? They've they've like, oh, Coop's come down and sort of whispering in my ear. They I think I was 
I think I might have went seven, eight and oh with Tex. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I went seven or eight and oh before uh, I, I just couldn't. Santa Claus, I shouldn't say Santa Claus, Chris, he was on me whispering in my ear, you know, you're going to get beat in it. Which he, he was, to be fair, I think he was probably right. Unless you have a promoter behind you, you're going you, to you're get beat, aren't you? Because yeah. you can't keep being a way fighter. Can't keep being a way fighter and keep upsetting the odds because yeah. the odds are against you. Yeah. So I went away as an away fighter seven or eight times and upset the odds. So, yeah, so then I, I, I signed with, uh, I signed with uh, Chris Sanagar. Yeah, so that's after the, the seven and all Chris Sanagar's coming in. Yeah, out. Chris Sanagar whispering me, I'll make, the, I'll make the world champion. So I was thinking, world champion, little pinky feet. Like, I, I was thought, yeah, this is me. This yeah. is it. This is it. So that's so, yeah, he, you know, you, yeah, he's put it in my head, you're going to be, you know, I'll make the champion. And he probably would have, but he did make me a champion. I was a Western area champion, but, you know, he... Because obviously then the criminal bit sort of started taking over because, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, well, I was probably 20 then, boxing on Sky. Um, I done, you know, I, I done my first shooting at 19, you know, so all of a sudden I'm in Bristol, that thing, that sort of stuff didn't really go on. Yeah. So I'm in pubs shooting people, you know, shooting people at 19, 20, I'm fighting a regular on Sky. You know, I was becoming really well known. Yeah, so these two worlds that you like envisioned yourself being in, they kind of collided now. So well, I was in. Career, and you're out committing serious crime shooters. And yeah, well, I was, I I think my first shooting, I was um, I think, 1920. I probably, so I'd had a row. I'd had a row with, uh, I'd, I'd, had a, I'd previously had a row with a guy a while, a while ago. And then I had a, I had a straight, I, yeah, no, I'd never straightened away and had a straight after. So I got into a row with a guy and then I got put I got put away. I got five I got five years. So then when I come out, obviously that argument was still on with me and this kid. So um I might have been a bit older than that, I might be about twenty one then because I got nicked because I got nicked in between. I got I got I got uh five five years. So I got nicked in between. Uh and so when I so when I so when I got out the guy drunk in the pub, I was, you know, quite fit, strong, and I was straight back in the gym. And then uh, I was in there, and then um, there was a group of kids. It was my, it was, it was a local. I used to go in. It was, a, it was called a fellowship, and there was a group of kids in there. And I, and I just, I said, "Where's that cunt to?" He went, "Oh, coops, you know, it's a while ago now." I shot him. Anyway, yeah, it just fell off. So I, I, uh, I had to sawn off at a kid's house. We used to, we used to look after it somewhere. I fucking walked to his house. Posty, he was called. We used to call him Postman, obviously. Posty. So I woke him up. I said, get the fuck out of bed. So I said, uh, I said get, where's, that, where's that sawn off? He said, well, I said, get that fucking sawn off now. I said, you're fucking driving. So anyway, got the thing, loaded it up. I said, anyway, I said, pull outside the pub. I pulled outside the pub. I said, if you fucking move, you were any banging. You any, bear in mind, it's like five o'clock now. It, 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 you know, people are still, four o'clock, people are still coming home, coming home from school. Yeah. I said, you fucking leave this spot. I said, I'll fucking shoot you next. I said, you fucking stay here. Anyway, I'll never forget. I got the gun and he was holding onto the steering wheel like that. He was holding onto the steering wheel like that. So I've gone in, seen the kid. I said, all right. And anyway, I blasted him. But because it was sawn off, it sprayed. It missed him. It hit the landlady. It hit a taxi driver. And it hit a woman collecting the glasses. So three people behind him fell over. I, I, of course, everyone just fell to the floor. Everyone was screaming. So of course I, I've come out of the pub. I spam around again to put one through the window. Everyone was fucking, you know, just was, it, people were coming home from work. All the kids on the bus just banging on the bus. <laughs> I got in the I got in the van. He was still he was still gripping all of the field. I said, "Come on, drive, drive, drive." Yeah. So um, got nicked actually. He got the on, on response unit dragged him out of bed, but but it was different. And this is twenty odd, you know, it was twenty odd years ago. So. If the witnesses never turned up, you never got, you know, they dropped all the charges and that's what happened. We, that's what happened. Well, I was nicked, I was on remand and then they, um, he went, if they, they got him out of the way, they kept him out of the way for four or five months and uh, they, they dropped the charges because there was no witnesses. So like piecing the story together then, turned pro at 19, gone seven and oh, signed by Chris Sanagan, mm. then you've had five years, and you've done a five year sentence. I've done five, yeah, I've done. F- come out then and did the shooting. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so well, I did. I did. I think I did two and a half. I can't remember what it was. I think it was probably two and a half. So I've come out. So um, 
so I'm on remand again for another for another year. So, um, so then I, I, I said, I come out. So I then signed with Chris, and Chris said, Look, you got to leave all that alone. I said, Yeah, of course, you know, you know. So you know what it's like for the first six months. You like just train every day off the booze, and you're training, and you're dis. But, but but to be fair, I was disciplined, man. I was, you know, although I had this this side life, I was disciplined, and I, and I really believed I was going to be a champion. There's 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 no there's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, I don't know if I, I don't know if I believed I'd be a world champion, but I, I did have that belief. You know what I mean? I did, I did, you know, I did have that belief. So, you know, so it sort of ran a lot. You, could, you know, cause bearing in mind when I was professional, I didn't work, so the crime subsidised me training. Yeah. So I did the crime. You know, I sold drugs because you know I didn't work, and, and you know I, I still got still got paid rent, and you. So yeah. I sold drugs because I was training, but but yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I, I I I I signed with Chris, and I had a I, you know I I had a great career, but it could have been a better career. Yeah. So, you know I had, you know, I had great fights. I, I I I think I went up to I fought Curtin and Lang. I think it was I was twelve no I was twelve and nine. I fought Curtin and Lang, yeah. and it was phew, there's no doubt he was world class. You know he was yeah, a, uh, yeah we beat Roberto Duran. He had a yeah he come he just fought a friend of mine, Kevolution. Kevolution stopped him, and um. Kevin just stopped him on a cut. I think it was a cut. I think it stopped him. Yeah, it was a cut. I think he stopped him on a cut. So he was offered the fight. So I was fit then. I'd only had, you know, he had more one round knockouts than I had fights. You know, he fought, we're all, you know, he, he was British champion, Colin Welsh, not type Colin Jones, who was a great Welsh fighter. So, I mean, but I believed, I just believed I would beat him. I just believed because I was fit, strong, and I had that sort of mentality. I thought I could beat anyone. You know, probably even now I still do. You know, I just thought I would beat him. I just thought I would break his heart. That's that's what I believed. I thought I would I would set such a high work rate, I'd break his heart. So we well, the fight was set for Brixton Academy. And Gary Stretch was top of the bill. No, Gary Stretch was top of the bill with me. He'd just come off a fight with Chris Eubanks. Yeah. So um we went to the venue, we weighed in, and I was in the same change room as is is Gary Stretch. And um yeah, so Again, it was it was just like the weirdest thing. I was getting myself all pumped up for the fight, and um, I don't know why. I, I I don't know why. But I started like punching all the all the. I, I, me and Ross Ross there was a, there was a great fighter in our camp called Ross Elvis. I was British Commonwealth. He was a fabulous fighter. Should have been a world champion. Yeah. So we was all in a chain because I, I was top of the world, trying, trying to psych myself. I started ripping, I started ripping the sink out. I mean, it's just like fucking how weird's that, you know? And. Gary said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. My head just fell off. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we boxed and won. And then um, I went down. And I can remember, I went down the steps, went down the steps. I could hear all the cheer, like a muffled sound. And I opened these big double doors. It's like fucking, I think it was seven, 8,000 screaming. They had like a DJ in there. And I just thought, fucking hell, this is it. You know, this is like, in my head, I thought, this is big time. This is, I'm having this, you know. And I can remember, and they had, they had some music playing when I got there. Got into the ring and I had people screaming and shouting. I mean, like, I sold quite a lot of tickets. I think just like two or three hundred of us went up. And uh, he come in. He come into this reggae. I heard this reggae, this reggae music. And he come in. There was loads of these dancers coming through, but like seven or eight dancers in front of him. And I just thought, fucking hell, you know. And then Chris said, "Listen, don't worry. It's a joke. Beat him. You can have one of them birds." And it sort of relaxed my. I thought, yeah, yeah. I, thought, I, I already picked mine. I already picked mine. <laughs> so anyway, so. Anyway, we we thought we had we had a he, he you know he not just saying it but he boxed out of his skin he boxed out of his skin. I was I was head on points and um, I got cut got a bad cut. I wasn't a puncher. I wasn't a puncher. Chris, I come back and Chris said, "Look, you're gonna have to knock him out. You're gonna have to knock this kid out because you're cut. They're gonna stop it." So um, anyway, obviously I didn't. I got cut. And I got I I got I got stopped. And I was obviously my first loss. It was obviously all broken. And then uh, it will never forget. We so we we a lot of people got the train up. So I I went back with my dad. So I, I so obviously when I was the fight, I stayed with Chris for a week before the fight. Yeah. So my so we said, come on, dad, we get the train. We'll go. So we walked down. We had to walk through Brixton to the uh, to the train station. Where well, the train station is just sort of round the corner from the venue. And with that, we've seen this little firm. Well, we've seen a couple of little firms. I went fucking. We're gonna get robbed. We're gonna get mugged there. So I looked at our dad. I said, oh, don't start. So I sort of, sort of took me sort of stance a little bit. And he went, there was about, I suppose, 
10 of them. And then he went, you're that white guy, ain't you? You're that white guy who fought our boy. I went, yeah. He went, come on, where are you going? And they walked me, they walked me and put me on the train. They went, come on, let's make, don't worry. Leave my, and they sort of walked me there. I walked to all my little gang. Kurt so Lang's fighters, but then they recognised me. They went, I think, I don't know, I, I, I felt like they was going to turn me over. Yeah. But when they recognised me, went, yeah, you're the white boy. You're that white boy. He said, come on, they sort of attacked me. Good fight, mate, good fight. And they walked me down and put me on the train. Fuck it, like so. You, uh, spoke to Kirkland since he fought. No, he sp- no, no, no. He, he, he passed away, didn't he? So um, yeah. they wrote, they, 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 they rang me up because they wrote, a, they wrote a book on him, didn't they? Yeah. But I think he's passed away. So I put a bit in the book. You know, obviously it was about him. So I said like some nice things. He was a great, fight, which he was a great fighter. You know, he was, yeah. he was fucking, he was, he was one of the greats. Yeah. He was probably. The greatest fighter never to win a raw title from 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 the UK. That's how great he was. I mean, you can't go to. I think it was Panama. He beat Duran, wasn't it? I think it was. Like I mean, like, how can you go Duran. there in his prime and beat beat one of the greats, yeah. the great greats? You know, yeah. so. So, do you think the, the the Lang fight was probably the pinnacle of your boxing? Well, no, I don't know because I mean then like so after the Lang fight, I sort of, oh then. I think that was my. 12 for 35, maybe 12 for 35. But then I'm 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 involved with crime. I'm sort of I'm in it now, it's quite deep. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then I trained really hard and I got no cause with the loss with Lang. You know, so I'm now 12 13 fights in. So but now I'm also because of you know, I'd fought on Sky a couple of times as well, you know, I'd already got a shooting under my belt. Uh so now I'm quite sort of heavily involved in selling drugs. You know, yeah. you know, racket in the racket in you know the pubs. You know, I was you know I've I was well known everywhere. You know, uh, so and wherever I went, you know, I'd, you know, we never queued, we never sort of very very you know we never offered, paid most of the restaurants or you know we we was we were flying, you know. So it, I, it was I'm not saying crime took over, but it sort of did. It sort of, it, it sort of did. I was still, I was still, I was still really going to win. But then it's like, I can remember we went to Vegas and um, did a little bit of training, not a lot. We come back and I boxed. And I, when I was away, I can remember ringing the, the, the worker up and I said, how much we got? He said, oh, about 10 grand, about 10 grand. So we earned, I earned 10 grand that, that week we was away. And Chris said, I got a fight for you. I said, how much? He said, 600 quid. Although I fought, I got cut over both eyes. I thought, do you know what? I don't really know now. You know, is this really for me? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Although I wanted to be a champion, I'm getting sort of 10 grand there and I'm fighting for 600 quid, which was a lot of money then. You know, oh, in the God. 90s, it's a, lot, it's, it's a lot of money. And I was, you know, and I thought I was bigger than what I was. I thought, you know, because obviously I'd go to restaurants, go to pubs, everyone knew me. Yeah. You know, we never, we never queued to get in clubs. We never paid to get in clubs. We fucking very, very rarely paid the bill. You know, so I was, it just took, it just took over, you know, there was fucking lap dancing clubs just started then. So, you know, I knew all the lap dance, you know, it just, it just all, and I just thought, yeah, this is, and I just imagined that's what it was when I was a kid with the little rings and the suits and the boards of money. And that's what it was. And I thought, fuck, and I love it. SBS Salvage, South Wales number one vehicle to smantler and car part specialist serving customers throughout the region for the past 10 years. You are sure to receive the very best price for your scrap or salvage vehicles. Just check out our websites, Scrap Car Cardiff, or even sbssalvage.com to get an instant online quote. We buy all cars, vans, etc. Should you need any part for your car or van, don't hesitate to call us, and our dedicated parts department will definitely be on hand to assist you. We also offer the very best prices for copper, brass, lead, aluminium, and all other types of metals. Just give our friendly staff a call on 01446 421 034, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, or Saturday, 9 to 1, to receive a price or come down to our depot in the rear of the unit, 7 Redrup Business Park, Cardiff Road, Barry, CF63 2QW. We also don't just buy cars and sell parts. We also sell power-worn tyres at the very best prices at our depot on Robins Lane in Barry. CF63 1QT. Call us Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, on 01446 701 515 
where we will assist you in any way we possibly can. I just loved this stuck in life and I was sort of in my twenties, I was game, I had money, I had a like the you know, whatever the best car was, and I, you know, I had women, birds, I thought, yeah, this is me, this is this is what it's about. Like I said wherever we went, they knew us. Like we didn't pay to go and everything queue to go anywhere. Yeah. You know, I just thought, well, this is the bollocks. Yeah. I, who, who wouldn't fucking want this life? So how long after that did you carry on fighting? Paul? Well, I carried on. I had I had um I had twenty fights. I had twenty professional fights. And I think Lang, I think Lang might have been me twelve or thirteen fights. So I had another seven fights after that. But I uh you know, I went on, I fought um I fought I didn't fight the Welsh champ. I was gonna fight the Welsh champion when when Lennox Lewis fought Frank Bruno here in Cardiff yeah. and I got cut. I got cut in sparring. But I fought I fought the German champion. And then I was, I fought the German champion. So I thought I beat like the area champions, like Northern, I was Western area champion anyway. So I fought the German champion. And then Chris got me a big fight. He got me a big, in, it was a, in South Africa, it was, a, it was a WBU belt. But back then it was a relatively new belt. Now I was bringing gear in from Holland. So I was thinking, so I was, I was you know, so I was, I was going training, but wasn't going training. I was just trying to get on the phone. You know, I was, you know, we had, we had, we had a bit of transport. So we had, a, so we was loading up. We was bringing the puff back from from Holland at the time. So then I kept missing missing the training. I kept missing the training, and then he pulled the plug. He said, "Listen, you fucking, you fucking want to be a gangster? You're going to be a fighter." And then he pulled the plug. He says, "I pulled it. Don't worry." So we didn't speak then for about six or seven months. So, so I, I come away. So then, and then what happened? I come back. I said, "I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna." I'm, I mean, you know, Chris done the right thing. Of course, if I'm not sparring, I'm not yeah, training. Not train. You know, for why? What's the fucking point? Yeah. You know. But I said, how much was I getting? I think I was getting something like three grand. But I was getting, getting bundles of money, bringing puff in. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. So I, I just, I didn't bother. So then I thought, right, you know, you can't get, get a grip of yourself. And then I think I did another. No, I think I did another sentence. I think I did another sentence. And then I come out, and it was like a, you know, before I went in. But there was a bit of coke about it and all that. But then when I got out, it was like a fucking pandemic. It was like everyone was sniffing coke. It was just, it was, it was you know, every time you go in the toilet, there was loads of wraps in the toilet. I thought, fucking hell, what, you know, what's this? So then I was still fighting. I, was, I started selling a bit of coke, selling a bit of crack. And then uh, it just, it's just got like, I was selling loads of it. And then, and then what happened? I beat the Irish champion in a great fight. You had me on the floor twice. And then I got up and I've done him in the last round, beat, beat the Irish champ. And he said, right, we've got another fight for you. We get to an Argentinian. I'm sure it was the IBF, but IBF belt. And then uh, again, I'm selling coke, fucking do it. You know, it, it sort of took over. And, he's, and he's, he said, listen, I'm going to pull it again. He said, you, you've got to make a decision. What do you want to be? Do you want to, you know, do you want to be a gangster? Or do you want to be a professional fighter? And I was getting, and, I, and you know, forget the puff. I was getting bundles of money with that coat. You know, I was, we was getting bundles of money. And I just thought, fuck this. You know, and I just said, I'm, I'm, I don't want to fight. And then um, he scrapped it. He scrapped the fight. But I still fought after that. I still, f no, no, I think, no, I think I fought McCracken before that. I think that was my last fight, but I fought seven times before that. Oh, and I, yeah, and I think that was, the, it was, when I fought McCracken, it was, I knew it was, the, it was, the, it was the end. Because what happened, if I, if I say I fought tonight, I go missing for a month. You know, I go out, get me money, I go pissed up. You know, I'd be there, fucking bra brass houses. I'd be lap dancers. I'd just it all be money out. Do you know what I mean? I just I'd be go go. I'd go missing for a month, and then what happened? What happened? Um, you know, he. I think my missus thrown fro fro me out. She'd, I think my missus kicked me out that day, which was regular actually. And then she, my mum said, "Oh, Crispin on the phone." Oh, I was like, "Don't don't answer it." I was going to get changed, and go straight back out. So I would. I mean, I would. I would be out every day for a month till all my money was gone. You know, me boxing money. Yeah. You know, like I say, wherever I went, I was known. So it was anyway. So he said, like that last ten, he said, you need to answer the phone. So anyway, so what happened? I come in drunk, and he caught me on the phone. I come in, the phone rang, and like an idiot, I picked the phone up. So he said, oh, where are you been? Where are you been? Oh, fuck. I said, oh, all right, Chris. I said, uh, he said, you need to get out of the office. You need to get out of the office. So I said, Chris, I'm drunk. He said, get out of the office. I said, I'll come, come. I said, I'll come right. I said, you, I said, I promise you. I said, Chris, I'm drunk. So I put the phone down, fell asleep, and with that, my trainer, so in the morning, my trainer rang me in the morning, John, uh, John Fairman. He said, all right? I went, he said, where have you been? I said, oh, fuck, I've been out all fucking, I've been out, sorry. He 
She said, oh, you're letting yourself down. You know, you're, we're getting you big fights. You're fucking pissed up, charred up all the time. He said, don't accept the fight. Don't accept the fight. I said, what fight? He said, you got a fight for you. But I was pissed for about a month, like every day, like out, charred it up, out me nut, like, you know. So I said, uh, I said, I ain't fucking said in a fight. So there's no way. So I went to sit, but what Chris had the art of is talking you into it. So gone and seen Chris. He's, oh, you've let me down. You let yourself down. You let your family down. I had a small child, Bryony, at the time. About your daughter, Bryony, you're letting her down. Like riddled me with guilt. He said, I've got a fight for you. I said, who's that? He said, McCracken, he was ranked four in the world at the time. So I said, Chris, I fucking, I haven't been in the gym for a month. What are you on about? Said, nah, it'd be all right. It'd be all right. Don't worry. We'll get you a return. If you don't, you know, we we'll get it in the contract. It's just, you know, you're a fighting man. When I was fighting, I used to go out, be on the piss all night. You know, be on the piss all night. They, they fight. And they did, didn't they? That's what they, so they did years ago. Yeah, so I thought, fucking hell. Do you know what I mean? I maybe. So all of us, because I, obviously I'm, I'm a fighter. I think I could beat anybody. I've still got that lodged in my brain. And I so I'm thinking, well, I might be all right. I might be all right. So then I said, how much? He went 1,500 quid. I said, Chris, he's four in the, he's four in the world. He went, get out of the office. Get out of the office. So I went out of the office. Before I shut the door, he went, come back in. He went, I got you four and a half rounds. It was a lot of money there. And it was Christmas as well. I can remember him saying, but if you want your little one anything for Christmas? I went, no. He said, well, there you are then. He said, he said, we got your Christmas money and more. I thought, do you know what? He's fucking right. He said, do you want the fight? Well, I fought in my head. It's going to be six weeks, five weeks, four, something like that. Yeah. You know, I never thought in a million years it was tomorrow. So he said, sign the contract. And it used to fax it off then. It was like with fax machines. So he signed it, faxed it off. He went, right, saying, he said, I'll get you. Uh, no, he said, can you pick my boy up in the morning? He said, I'll meet you. He said, I can't, he said, I can't drive. Can you drive there? I said, where am I driving? He said, uh, he said, Bethnal Green. He said, you're, that's where the weighing is. I said, what are you on about? He said, tomorrow you're fighting. I said, Fucking hell, Chris, I didn't, I didn't think you meant tomorrow. I thought you meant next month. He went, no, it's tomorrow. I said, how can I? I was still I'm over. I'm absolutely, a, absolutely hanging. I'm overweight. I said, Chris, I've not trained one day. In, it must be f since the last fight, five, must be five weeks. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. We'll get a return. We'll get... Oh, it just talked me into it. I just fucking hell. So I go and my dad said, what happened? I said, I'm fighting. He said, what did you take it for? I said, dad, I don't know. I said, I just, dad, I can't think of it. I just need to go to bed a minute. Get us up, and then all day, all like through the night, I didn't see it thinking, I'm gonna be all right, I'm gonna be all right. And then I sort of tricked myself, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna win. I sort of I woke up, I thought, you know what, he's fucking having it. You know, I am a fighter, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tough, and I, you know, I'm, 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 he's having it. So I had to pick his son, so I drove, so I drove all the way, didn't even get a lift at the mind, so I gave, drove all the way to Bethnal Green, goes and get, get the way. Well, like, he, he then, he just, I can't remember he boxed, but he stepped up, up in weight because he couldn't make the weight. Yeah. So Chris was saying, yeah, but he's overweight. He's not going to be able to make it. He's overweight as well. But what he didn't tell me was that day he stepped, he stepped up in weight because he, cause, cause he couldn't do like middle. So we weighed. He was a really nice guy. To be fair, Rob, he was, he was, a, he was a really, really, really yes, nice. He was, a, honestly, he was a really sound geezer. And then, uh, you know, I tried to sort of be a lucky, but he was such a nice guy. You know, he was, fuck, he was a great fighter. So then what happened, there was a, a restaurant, so we weighed him. There was a restaurant around the corner called Ringside. I believe Vic Andretti had it. It was a middleweight. So then Sky's in there, all Sky TV and that. And then uh, Sky TV, and so they, they said, oh, how'd you feel, how'd you feel? I just thought, I feel shit. What, do you know what I mean? I just said, I mean, Chris, I need to speak to you. He said, what's the matter? I said, fucking get in the I said, I ain't fighting. How, the f how can I fight, Chris? I haven't trained. I said, it's a... You'd be right. I said, Chris, I won't be all right. I said, I've got all Sky TV, f millions of viewers watching me. I said, it's out of order. I said, you shouldn't have even rang me up. He said, well, I was ringing you for a week. I said, but you should have said, no, he's not been in the gym. He can't, you know, he can't fight. Anyway, so he talked me into it again. And then um, I didn't do too bad, really. I got stopped in five. But for somebody who never trained, you know, but, but that's my biggest regret. Not because he beat me, because he was a great fighter, because I didn't train for it. Yeah. You know, and that was the... F and I can remember it, like for years, it was the only fight on YouTube as well. I'd done my edit. It just used to do my edit. I just thought, oh, put that on there. Can I just take off? Yeah. But yeah, but he, he said, I, I spoke to Rob afterwards. He come in, such a blinding geezer. He said, like, everyone's going to know you took it at short notice. And um, he, was, he, was just, he was just a real, really nice guy. He was a really nice and uh, Yeah, so, and that then was really like the end of the career. That yeah. wasn't your last fight though? No, it wasn't the last fight. I then boxed again. I knocked the kid out one round. I knocked the count one round. I come back. Well, no, I, 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 
no, I fought another guy, but it was coming to the end, and they had this, this, they had this, this big fight for me, and that's when they had this. I beat the, I think the Irish champion. Then we had me down twice, like, like I said, and then they, he had a big fight in Argentina, and I, that's when I was selling the coke, mm-hmm. and it was all getting quite, you know, quite deep, and then I, that's when he said, "Listen, you need to pick," and I, I chose the other, and sort of it went long after I got, you know, five years. So that was the sort of end of my career. So end of your boxing career, you know, you won't make that again, and that's a life of crime. Well, it was a life of crime. Know? I mean, um, you know, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, what do you want to know about that? I mean, obviously, we were selling goat. We was, at the time, we were was, was smuggling puffing. Um, yeah, and then it wasn't long after I went to jail. It wasn't long after. I think I, think I got another sentence not long after. Because uh, I did about... I don't know, 16, 17 years behind the door. It's what I served. Yeah. But then, you know, it was it was quite, you know, through that space, it was quite violent. You know, it, it was obviously, you know, you sort of carving your your name. Yeah. So yeah. So let's talk about like some of your memorable moments from prison. Then. Well, I've had fucking loads to be honest. I mean, like, I mean, I remember, like, I had a governor. I had a governor bang the door. I was on the phone. And we didn't bang the door. We just opened the door and come in. I quickly put the phone under the... Because I used to have it... We used to sh- check me and the cellar used to sometimes we used to share it. Like, I might have it in the day, in the dinner hour, and he'd have it at night. So he'd come in. He's come in the room. I fucking hell. The door's gone. He's, I put the, f- the, the the phone under under the, the blanket. He went, oh, cool. It's all right. It's all right. And it was the governor. So he said, uh, I've just... Joey Till was the cleaner. And he was, like, the number one. And he sort of confided with Joey Till, a friend of mine. He said, oh, Coops, I have a word. I thought, fucking hell, I've got the phone in my hand. I think, oh, I'm fucking nicked here. And then uh, he, he, he locked the door because obviously you, you double, you lock it so he, so he can't shut it on him. So he, so the door is, they put the bolt across, you know what I mean? So, the, yeah. so he's locked it, so it's not inside, so he's locked, so he can't shut it. So he went, oh, can I have a word? I went, what's the matter? He said, uh, my miss is having an affair. Well, this is the governor. Of the this prison. is the governor. Wasn't number one governor. It was like like, fr- like three because there was yeah, five, yeah. wasn't there? So I said, I'm "Fucking, hell, what do you want me to do?" He said, "You he said you got hurt in for me, Coops." He said, "You got a fucking." He said, "I want." I said, "I want you to put one in him." I said, "You want me to shoot the kid for you?" I thought straight away. I thought he's going to bring loads of drugs in for me now. How can he not? How can he not? So I said to him, "Are you fucking sure? Are you sure you want the country?" He said, "I'm shot." He said, "But I don't want anyone to hurt my missus because I still love her. I still love her." I went. All right, all right, all right, all right. I said, all right. I said, get out of my room then. I said, I'll see what I can do. Anyway, so, so I rang my mate up, Blaggy, a good friend of mine. I said, all right, man, I should fucking never guess what's happened. So I've told him what's happened. I said, you, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was, it was, it was a coloured guy she, he was, she was seeing. Yeah. I said, do you know him? He went, yeah, I know him. He's a fucking idiot. I said, right, he wants him plugged. I said, just smash his head in. I said, just... Uh, just smash his head in. I said, you don't have to, just don't have to put one in. I was just, just dirty back. He said, yeah, don't worry. So I'll oh, fuck it. I'll do it tonight. I said, oh, definitely. He said, 100%. I said, don't shoot. Don't go too far. Just punch his head in. He went, all right. So anyway, later on, the, the governor come back up. He said, all right. I said, yeah. I said, that's sorted. I said, see me in the, I said, uh, see me, see me in the morning. He said, Coots, he said, all I want you to do is not hurt my missus. He said, please just don't hurt my missus. Don't. He said, I just love her. I said, yeah, yeah stop keeping on about it. I said, it'll be fine. So anyway, fucking in the morning, fucking door come flying up. You know what have I said? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? You fucking promised me. I said, what do you want to pay? He said, you promised me nothing would happen to my missus. You promised me. I said, go, you're going to have to get out. Fucking, I went out. He give me that fucking phone. So I rang me, mate. I said, uh, I said, fucking hell, what's happened? He went, oh, coops. He said, I, I banged the door. He said, I banged the door. He said, and, um, so I banged the door. The geezer come out. Come over. She jumped on my back. So I f- spun around. I've stuck the stun gun in her neck. He said that she's like had an heart attack on the. F- she said like got an heart attack on the floor. So I went, oh fuck. I said. So anyway, so the governor come. He said she nearly died. She's nearly died. They had to put her on the things. Like I said, fuck. I said I don't know. He said you're Nick. I said you're fucking starting all that shit. Anybody come to nick me about a year later for it? I was in Shannon's Wood. They come to what interview? I said what we on about. Yeah. So the governor must have. Up, yeah. Up, yeah. So what was your maddest time like? Kind of selling the gear and stuff in you know, Bristol. Well, I mean, it was all mad. Every day was mad, but I sort of throwed off it a little bit, you know. 
but when it was non-paying, you know, if they didn't pay, because yeah. I had this sort of like if I like if I was to do it now, I, you know, but I'm older now. You don't, you know, I sort of stay under the radar, sort of. But you know, as a kid watching all them films, that's how you want to be. You think, yeah, yeah, well. yeah, you think right, violence. You got to be violent, but that's the that it's the opposite. You ain't got to be violent because that's how you get fucking nicked. So, you know, I mean, like, I mean, I can I can remember. Um, oh, I mean, I got I got so many. I can remember some guy owed me money, and um, some guy owed me money, and uh, he said he'd give it to this other guy. So I said, "Fuck, I'll do me. You've had the you've had the bits. You got to fucking pay. So you can just help me get the bit, get the money back." I never played. I bought I had a brand new Volvo convertible at the time. It was no two picks, whatever long ago that is. So we've gone to this like four story like block of flats, and then uh, so I said, "Look, you go up and see if you can get the, see if you can get the money." So he's ringing me up. Cooch going to have to come out. Fucking hell. So gone away, gone right there. So I don't really want to get involved, really, because I didn't give him the bit. So I go in there. It's like a fucking, like a fucking crackling in there. So I said, uh, I said, well, what's happening? He said, I've smoked it. Well, I didn't really know what that meant. He said, I've smoked it. I've no blazed it. He said, I've blazed it. I've blazed it. What's he fucking on? What's going on? Anyway, I don't know what's going on. He said, he smoked it. I said, well, I said, there was a saucepan on the side. And there was like, do you know, like when they burn the knife and they cut the puff up? It used to be the puff then, years ago. I got some like, fucking smashed me straight in the moe with it. And the saucepan snapped in half. So my mate, I went out there with, started laughing. I'm like, oh, fucking funny, is it? So I've got this, this knife. Anyway, I fucking must have plunged him about 10 times. I've fucking plunged him, I've plunged him, plunged him. Anyway, me, 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 just me fucking head fell off. So with that, it was a drill plugged into the wall. I went, right, you cunt. Oh, get that fucking drill. I grabbed him by the arm, dragged him over. I've revved the drill up. Anyway, he must have thought, fucking hell. So he's wriggled free. Oh, I'm not exaggerating. He rang, he dived straight through the window. The window was shut, mine. He dived straight through the window. And like, it's like this bit here was hanging through. And I thought, fucking hell, he's going like, to die. I said, I said, grab him, mean him, pull him back. And he was so scared, he threw himself out. Fucking four blocks, four fours, he's fucking smashed. I thought, fuck, he's dead. He's fucking, he's got to be dead. I thought, oh, fuck, what have I done? Do you know what I mean? So we come there, there's a massive like, edge of people. I said, oh, I said, must have been smoking crack. I said, they think they can fly out time, don't they? So I said to Jody, who was my, my best friend and partner, I said, we better have it on our toes. I said, we better have it on our toes. I think he's dead. So uh, we went on the run down in uh, Devon. So do you remember that uh, the one who used to stutter? He was on Pop Idol, he, uh, Gareth, Gates. Gareth Gates. So we've booked in. He, there's a so we've booked in the same hotel as him. Well, no, I've booked in the same hotel as him. So anyway, I don't really know what's happened. Next thing I know, like that Gareth Gates come through, and Jody was my mate. Jody, my best friend, he, he was like a bit Larry. So we've got an our anyway. He's fucking, he's chin two of the two of the bodyguards, two of the. Two, and I said, run, run down here. I'm thinking it's for murder. So yeah, so uh, but anyway, it was funny. The kid was funny. I seen him in the nightclub about five weeks later, with two broken legs on it. On like, you know, I felt so embarrassed. He come over to me. <laughs> I said, "So, oh fucking, hell, mate, you're right." <laughs> I felt like a little bit sorry for him. You know what I mean? I said, "Oh, you're right, mate." I said, "Fucking hell." You also became um, a boxing promoter as well, didn't you? Yeah. So um, I got one of my sentences. I think it was two thousand six, two thousand five. And then um, I thought, fucking hell, what am I going to do? Now, obviously, I was selling quite a lot of drugs, so I, would, I had a clientele before I even started. You know, I had the clientele. So I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a boxing promoter. So I, I was friendly with Jane Couch, who's Box for Tex. And so I started, I, I signed, no, I didn't sign her, I promoted her, first of all. Jane Couch. Jane Couch. So we were putting dinner shows on, and I was selling like 30 tables all on my own. I thought, fuck, this is, you know, it was a, you know, it was a great night. Singer, and I thought, yeah, this is a, this is a bit of me. Yeah. So then, because I was still selling drugs, it was I was using drug money to finance the shows. So most promoters back then was putting a show on every sort of three months. I was putting one on one on a month because my because the drug money was subsidising, uh, yeah. and I was cleaning up the money. And then so then so, so so with boxers, all they want to do is fight. They don't really care what they fight for really, as long as they're fighting. So. But in no time at all, I had about 40 fighters. You know, I had, them all, I had them all over the world. You know, so, you know, we was putting shows on. I mean, and then we had, uh, I had some good fighters. Dean France was probably the best fighter I had. Uh, he was a legend. You know, he was British, Commonwealth, Europe. He was, he was world class. And uh, 
he, so I went from, so he signed with me. He, he, what happened, he had a discated shoulder. He was fighting for Sanagar. A discated shoulder, and he, 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 he was a world-class fighter. And he went, so we was fighting because he discated his shoulder a couple of times, and, they, and, the, and the, they said that you won't fight again because your shoulder. So he was a guest of honor at my show. So uh, I said, look, I can't believe they can put man on the moon. They can cut your fucking toe off, put it, put it on your foot. And, like, and, and it works. The boy can't he fit this anyway. So he, I said, if I can get you fixed, you come and fight for me. He went, yeah, but it, it can't be fixed. It can't be fixed. So uh, we went to a specialist in London and he went, yeah, it ain't that bad. So, so all of a sudden I went from this small old boxing to sort of, it was like premiership. You know what I mean? So, you know, so like on a, on a, on a weekly basis, I was chatting to Barry and Frank Roggs. They all wanted to sign him. I, so it just went fucking like overnight. I went, so I'm on, you know, it was just, it was just amazing. It was no doubt the best time. Of, there was no doubt the best time of, my life, oh, I fucking loved it. I'm selling gear, I'm promoting. I'm, like, it was just, you know, we're putting shows on to like, thousands of people. You know, we're getting fighters coming from South Africa. We're getting, like all over. I'm thinking, oh, mate, this is this. I'm cleaning all my drug money up to, to good, good money, yeah. you know, and I'm enjoying it. You know, we, had, we got trainers in, we got a gym. I thought, you know, I thought this is it, you, you know, so. How did the uh, getting my Tyson over? How did that all come about? Well, what happened? Because I, I didn't get him over. My friend got him over. He was doing a tour. So what happened? He was doing a tour, Mike Tyson, in, and my friend, I got a good friend, Joe Egan, who's, who's a blinding guy. Yeah, and he, Egan. He's a fabulous yeah. guy, you know. So he, he said, look, I can, do you want to come to the show? I said, I said, I could get to meet Mike. So obviously, like like everyone, he's like one of everyone's hero, isn't he? So I said, yeah, it's the same, fine. So anyway, it was in Manchester. So we went to Manchester, me, me and a friend of mine, Tony A. So he was one of the promoters as well. So we've got there. We've booked, and we booked in the same hotel as Mike Tyson, which we didn't know about. So we got there a bit late. So I can remember seeing Mike at like the desk at the bar. And I remember looking at him and think, God, he's little. Do you know what I mean? He's small. And he looked quite overweight. Not, not, listen, I'm not saying he, he wasn't fucking a beast because he, he was, but he wasn't the sort of Mike Tyson when he was 20, 20. You know what I mean? He wasn't that much. So I'm looking at him thinking, you know, he looks a lot smaller than I thought. So then we were sat at the front. It was on telling. It was like a question answer thing. You you write these questions down, put them in, and somebody would stand up and ask these questions. Oh, table one said, what was your oldest fight? And, you know, so there was a girl sat by me and she kept asking these questions. And I thought, he's going to bang her. There's no doubt, you know, because she was asking more questions than anybody. Kept putting her hand up, kept writing, you know, writing these, these, these questions down. Thought he's going to bang her. So anyway, it was all right. It was all right. It was a little bit vacant. He seemed a little bit vacant, Mike. You know, I didn't think it was great. It was all right. So then they had, a, they had an auction. I wasn't interested in the auction. So I said to Joe Egan, we're going to go um, back to the hotel. So we come around. He said, well, he said, well Mike's in the hotel. Now, I thought Joe would say, oh, my mate's down that hotel. You know, I'll introduce you to him. Well, I just thought for some reason he would have, he would have said, my mates come up here and I'd like you to meet my friend. So we're in the bar. So we're in the so we're in the bars. There's me, my mate Tony, and there's a man and a woman at the bar. So I'm thinking, well, Mike could be here in a minute. You know, and I was looking forward to just meeting him, sort of chatting to him. So then I see all these um we're right, so we're downstairs. So I see all these these cars come in the car park and all these lights come on. So I think we must ask her obviously the entourage, it's obviously Mike. So uh, with that, all these like fucking bankers, they were really not fucking divots, really. Entourage, yeah, entourage. Right. They all come and they're looking around. I don't know what I was looking for. Looking behind the curtains, I thought, what are you looking for? I was a bit over the top. With that, I see Mike come in. So he's come. He's gone to the bar and he was chatting to the, the bloke and the woman there. So I've got up. I said, oh, I, I, <laughs> hello, Mike. Nice to meet you. I said, uh, I'm a friend of Joe Egan's. I said, it's an honour to meet you. I said, would you like a drink? He went, nah. He said, uh, nah, you're all right. I said, listen, I don't mind buying everyone one. I said, I, you know, you're one of my, one of my heroes. Nah, nah, you're all right, mate. I thought, you fucking shit, dumb me head in. I thought, anyway, so you ordered a fucking good round. He went, the white boy's getting here. I said, am I fuck? I said, am I fuck? Anyway, they all sort of, uh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I grabbed the ashtray. I grabbed the, 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 grabbed the, the, the ashtray off the side. I thought, fuck this. Anyway, so it was a big commotion. They sort of all had him. And then the, what happened? The girl that was sat behind me, she turned up. She said, my, my, the girl's there, the girl's there. Anyway, he was shouting and screaming some. I, I didn't say no more. I just had the, the glass ashtray in my hand. I was going to smash it straight in the head with the glass ashtray. So 
about 40 body of security banks or whatever sort of escorted him to the fucking, to the, um, to the bedroom. So he went, you're lucky. I said, oh, boy, am I lucky? I said, I ain't fucking lucky. I said, he's expected to knock me out. Imagine I'm not that cunt out. I said, I ain't fucking lucky, mate. Yeah. So I just thought, what have I got to lose? I'm going to get, you know, you're, you're expected to get knocked out, in you? So I just thought, fuck it. So I just grabbed the ass, right? But right, he's having it, the cunt. And then, uh, yeah, so, uh, and my, my mate was in the room next to him. He said, just heard the woman screaming all night. He just screamed all night. <laughs> he said, he couldn't he come up to the room. But yeah, so, uh, okay, but it's... Like, so how many other celebrities have you chinned? Have you heard you've chinned oh, I don't fucking know. I, I got Gordon Ramsay. What happened with Gordon Ramsay? I got him, uh, was it, was it Ricky Atten Costa Zoom? We're all at VIP. So, oh, I, can't remember. I was in, was in there pissed. And we had this sculpture, this ice sculpture, and it was pouring neat vodka for it. Well, it was free anyway, but I was treating it like it was like, like, you know, so I said, fucking next one. I'm, I'm like, we're all lagging. I'm just, I'm just saying like, big daddy's here. Big daddy. And I go, Ramsey, who's the fucking daddy? Anyway, he got a bit sarcastic. Because I've probably just done his head and like, Next one off, oh, fuck, it's doing me off. What's he been room? So I've jumped up, I've gone over. Anyway, next one, oh, we've, we've, had, we've had a rub, I've got him an headlock. I've choked him out, smashed him into the wall, started drilling him on the floor. And like all the, all the, all the security's come running over. I've sort of got him like choking him out on, 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 the, on the floor. All the, the security's come over. So whatever, about nine of us, so we've jumped up. He's fucking wanker, fucking let out, fucking on, shit itself. Yeah, he's fucking comatized. And then, uh, but they tried, they said, we're not going. So they said, look, you, we'll just escort you to the seat yeah. and that'd be fine. So that's what happened. But then I've done a few, I've done fucking Lovejoy. I've put Lovejoy asleep. Okay. He, were, he was in a nightclub walking down with two birds and I was queuing. I thought, it's in London. I thought, fuck this. I come out, I said, crack. I put him asleep. Again, um, went off the bill, Burnside. I hit him with a chair. <laughs> he was looking at my missus at the time, but I thought he was. <laughs> he probably wasn't. So I, so I done him with a chair. I done a fucking few. So any other like mad stories when you were collecting debts and things? Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I say I, I think most people in this game they've all got fucking loads, aren't they? Yeah. But I, I can remember I had a. I still got a dear friend Blondie, you know, great guy, and um, we we put this guy to work. We had to run up. We had I think we had about hundred grand to go up to Liverpool. We was getting bits from there then, and uh, so they wanted him to get up there early. So. They said, um, can we get there early? So we give him the money the night before. I think it was ease. I think it was ease then. I'm sure we was getting a load of ease. So uh, anyway, so didn't think nothing of it. Didn't think nothing of it. So at 10 o'clock comes 11 o'clock. He rang. So how long drug ease are going to be? So I went, I was, I was, he rang. I said, we should, we should be there at 10 o'clock. I said, well, I don't know. So he's not answering. So it's been on all, It's been on for a couple of hours. He said, Ron, he said, he's fucking, he's nicked the money. He's nicked the money. I said, I don't think he would have nicked the money. I said, he might have been nicked. He said, his, his fucking phone's ringing. I thought, fuck it now. So, of course, you just think the worst, don't you? So, we've looked everywhere for I've gone to his mum's house. I've gone to his girlfriend's house. I said, I'm going to fucking kill him. Where is he? Anyway, I said, anyway, so now it's like four o'clock. So, I said to Blondie, I said, because he lived his side. I said, check the flat again. So, anyway, so he rang me up. He said, he's there. That's all he said. He's there. I went, he's there. I thought, fuck, he's at the money. He's kind of on the way over I, I just cannot think of anything Boris had the money so anyway he lived in like a, a, like a flat above a laundrette so when I ran up he left the door open blonde I ran around the stairs fucking didn't say anything I've steamed into him I've hit him fucking I've hit him all around the room I've held him and I fucking beat him after death anyway blonde went no the money I said where's the fucking money he went anyway I had the money there he said he's just I just over I felt terrible I beat him after death right and he's just overslept. That's all he's done, he's overslept. I thought, oh, I felt terrible. So I had to make some up. So I said, but then you were nicking the money. He went, yeah, but not a lot. I went, what? I went, what? I fucking done him again. And there was a big speaker. It was a big speaker. I fucking spanned the speaker. I had wire, ripped the wires out. I filled him in. I've got him on the bed. I've tied his hands behind his back. I've span him over. I said, how much you had, you cunt? How much you fucking had? Not even thinking he'd nicked anything. So I've ripped his trousers and pants down. I've got his cock. I said, I've got I've yanked it out. I got the knife on the side. I said, how much you fucking had? He was fucking screaming. He went, not much, about a grand, about... F anyway, I started going out. Anyway, the, the blood just started fucking just going, just going everywhere. Anyway, I got him up to about fucking four grand. But I went, don't, you're going to cut it off. You're going to cut it off. Anyway, fucking... But I didn't even think he... I was only joking when I said it because I beat him up and he just overslept. So I, I said, I just made it. I said, yeah, but have you been seeing the money? He said, yeah, but not a lot. 
I feel I just kept his mouth shut. Oh, yeah, you've actually been stealing, but I, I was, I didn't think he had been. I was just lying about it. So uh, yeah, so oh, and I seen him. I see. Oh, he's a fucking state of claret everywhere. Anyway, so you're gonna cut his fucking cock off. It was fucking claret. And I seen him when we was away in park. So I, I was, I come out on the land and I seen him about three years later. I thought, oh fuck, this is all three. So I went, you all right, mate? <laughs> you're all, yeah, you're right, coops. <laughs> Yeah, but, but there's loads. I've got loads. Any, any other ones? No, I mean, I mean, I've mean, I got so many. It's just sort of loads. Just loads, you know, loads. You, you got loads, you know. I used to do their hands with pliers. You know, I just, just a fucking... That was... That's my biggest regret, really, is, is, is afflicting so much pain because that's what got us nicked. Yeah. It's one, one thing selling drugs, but when you're beating them after death, I mean, there was a fucking day late. We want to... I mean... Why anyone would want to buy gear off us? For fuck knows, because if they was a day late, yeah. you'd be fucking kicking their door in. Yeah. You know? So what are you up to at the moment then? How's your life now and what you've got there? Yeah, to? no, it's good. No, it's all good. I uh things have changed, you know, things have changed. I I've got, I've got a partner, Laura, you know. Um I got a fruit and veg business. Um so I'm just about to, to I'm just about to do an HGV lorries, and I'm gonna get some sort of Lorry, some sort of all this company I don't really know yet, yeah. but it's all changed. But you, but you just mellow, don't you? Yeah. You know, you just, you just, you just, it just, it just mellows, you know. And I, you know, I, 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 you know, so it's like, although I don't regret anything I've done, I still would have changed it. Yeah. I still would have changed that. I still would have changed it because it's like now I'm 54 now, and you know, you just think, you know, sometimes it like I see, I see, like, I see some of the some of the sons whose dads I beat up. And I think, fucking that was awkward. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. you know, not that, not that. Coming the, back round. Yeah, sort of coming back round. You know, sort of, sort of coming back round. I think, mm-hmm. not that, you know, because I still get on with everyone over my son at the time, there's no doubt. Yeah. You know, but I have caused fucking mayhem over the years with, with fucking so many people. So. Any plans to get back into like the promoting? Or well, the I don't concert? know. I, to be fair, I have been thinking about it. You know, I've been thinking about it. Um, I spent a, a lot of time away because obviously we had the COVID and that, and so I've been away quite a lot. And I, I'm back now. My son's, I think, my son's little Dean's gonna is is, li- is living with me now. So I've, I've, I've been thinking about it. yeah, I've been thinking. Do you but, think he'll well, I don't know. I mean, it's just like it, it, I, I don't really know. I mean, none of my kids have really been interested. You know, none of my, none of my children's been interested. Mm. Um, I got a son Kieran, who's a good, really good footballer. Um, I, I got my, another son Jay, who was a really good footballer, uh, but none of us really wanted to box. None of us really wanted to fight. You know, I suppose I would be. You know, am I disappointed? You know, I, I don't, maybe because it'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be nice to yeah. see your your son fight and you know, you know, box and maybe go a long way. Um, but they're all they're happy. You don't see they're, they're both good at football. They're both both got their own lives. My son Kieran, he, he's having a baby. Jay's doing his thing. He's happy. He's happy with my son. My other son Dean. He's he's gonna move in with me now. By the look of it, uh, my daughter. She's just got married. She's married a, a real nice guy. Nick. He's a, it's a bit weird, but he was a friend of mine ten years younger than me. But so they had a great wedding. They had a fabulous wedding. In fact, matter of fact. So I got four great grandchildren. So life's good for me, really. So yeah, life's nice. good. So yes, yeah, so life's good. So I don't really do. I want any madness? No, not really. Just want a piece. I can understand it when when I was younger, and I used to go. As, I, I got a, a, a most one of the most best friend in the world called Martin King. He's the mo- legend of bung, bung, legends. Martin he's, got us all the uh, uh, he's books just, off Freddie Foreman. He's he? just a, he's just a, a legend, and he sent me on. And I can understand it when he says, "Say to me, oh, they've all moved out in the country, or they've all moved out to the seaside." I can understand it when the, the villains they move away because yeah. they're just away from it. Like at the moment, you know. Not that I've got any danger coming to me, but it's all it's all it's all around you all the time, man. So I can understand why they, they fuck up and fuck off abroad, or they fuck off to the coast, or they go to out in the country just to be away from it because yeah. it's all around you, isn't it? You know. And sometimes my kids are coming and say, "Fucking hell, Dad, did you do this? Did you do that?" Or, "Fucking hell, you." Um, my son, my son um, Jay, he, his brother's girlfriend, well, I, well, I shot her dad. So he said always, oh, he said, "Well, your dad shot me." So we only my 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 son comes. Oh, you, you, sh- you shot Danny's 
girlfriend's dad. I went, yeah. So it's like a bit like, oh, fucking hell. He says, you all right about it? <laughs> he said, what'd you do that for? I said, oh, I can't remember. So I said, you can't look. You know, so a lot of it does, don't come back to bite me. I don't give a fuck, fuck about it. But, you know, you you don't really want your kids knowing everything, do you? Do you know what I mean? So, but anyway, but it is what it is. I don't regret nothing I've done. I'm, you know, I've, I've had a good life, a great life. You know, and I, I did it all with my mate, my, uh, Jody, who was my best friend who passed away. Yeah. Uh, passed away. Uh, this, uh, uh, fucking heartbreaking. Uh, he was like, he was with me all the way through. We were partners all the way through. Yeah, so it. everything I've just said about, he would have been with me. Yeah. You know, so it, yeah, it was, died of cancer at 40. You know, it's just, we're here one day, we was here, say today, didn't feel very well, two months later, it was dead. Just fucking dead. So, but so that that was a big pill to swallow, you know. So, yeah, but I suppose I've got. All right, well, Coos, thanks for coming. It's oh, no, been my such pleasure. a pleasure, Mike. It's been interesting talking to you and, you know, just wish you the best for the future. It's been no worries. My pleasure. My pleasure. Cheers, Coos. Cheers. Cheers.